The Indecisive Cinema, episode five. Not Empire Strikes Back, <laughs> but uh, but something a little better. We're than not that. we're not quite on that level yet. Yeah, but um, but this is episode five, and uh, I am once again Carlos Hernandez, and to the right of me is the incomparable. I'm actually in front of you. Into the front of me, <laughs> the incomparable. <laughs> I'm not. Jer- I'm not to the right of him. Uh, Jeremy Knight. Hi, I'm Jeremy Knight. And um, Jeremy Knight, uh, what do you got to say? Anything since last week? Anything, anything big happened to you? I have watched a lot of movies. Yeah, actually, exactly. Like like, a, like a, an amount that's just not healthy. Well, I'm glad. Lo- normally you do, and then like you've been laying low for a bit. I just I just haven't gone outside. Yeah, it's, it's cold. Been, it's cold in Houston. No, it's not. <laughs> this is not cold weather. Well, I got a broken ankle, so I can't do anything. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, what? we we never mentioned that. We've not mentioned yeah. that on the podcast. <laughs> Carlos has had a broken ankle for the past three episodes, or I guess this being the third episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and we never discussed it at all. Actually, I don't even know how did you break your ankle. So here's a here's a weird, interesting story. So I I, I went on my adventure to Dallas to see a it's weird, interesting story. Lisa's daughter Sama I fell in, <laughs> in uh in a, a the Ghost of Christmas Present in a production of Christmas Carol. Then I went to New York and I saw my family and. Had a great time there, and then we came back to Texas, and the, I had a Christmas party here since we didn't celebrate Christmas. Me, my girlfriend Rhonda, and and my sister Charlene, and I uh, here's here's the funny story. I'll even do. I mean, we got E already for explicit. I noticed that on iTunes. So I went to the bathroom to go to the bathroom to relieve my bowels without saying taking a shit. And um, my then nephew wanted to I think use. You're allowed bath- to say take a shit. <laughs> I think we'll allow that. We already got E on us. So yeah, we're, we're, good. we're rated explosively. Well, but yes, we are. Which is Even though we, we only dropped like one F bomb a show. <laughs> so I then left to go get a spray to spray. Um, and then my nephew was going to go in. So I, I was like, no, no, no. Let me, you know, let me make it, you know, decent in there. So he left. And then I went in there. Light some matches. I'm spraying and everything. And then as I'm, I stopped spraying. And I go to whip my hair because I said, you know, it'd be nice. You know, take the kid. I, my, my girls were going to go back to their mother. Um, the next day, so I said, take him out to see the trees, maybe go spend some of the money my father gave us for Christmas, buy some more Infinity Toys for our Disney uh, game, and as I'm, as I'm putting hair, water in my hair, my sister's talking to me, so I come out the door, so you have water mixed with the, 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 the air freshener, which created some type of slick st- substance, and as I stepped out of the bathroom, my, and, and let me tell you something, my kids always leave a mess, I, fl- I slipped a million times. Busted my ass a million times. This time, I stepped with my left foot, and I went out, and my right foot slipped and spun. My left foot is still stationary, and as I'm doing a 180-degree turn, I'm saying, God, when is my foot going to turn to so I don't break my ankle? And then I heard a, I heard a pop. I screamed, threw myself to the ground, and my ankle was swollen up, and that's sort of how I broke my ankle uh, the day I got back from New York uh, in Texas. And now you're crippled. And now I'm a cripple. Uh, Jeremy actually is a very good guy. He, he took me to the hospital today. I have my moments. We we, we, we actually have the Seinfeldian relationship now. We, we, he takes me <laughs> I to the airport. I picked the airport. <laughs> and now to the doctors. So, I mean, you know, when my foot gets bad, I, I owe Jeremy a lot. Whenever, <laughs> but I always tell Jeremy and John, John, if you ever need me, I'll always be here. I love both of them. But that's my story about the broken ankle. Uh, not as exciting as uh, this week's uh, Golden Globes or everything we got for you today. What do we got for them? What, what director were we talking about today, Jack? We were talking about Spike Jones. Spike Jones. Not Spike Lee, which one day we'll get to, but Maybe. Spike Jones. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I could sit through all of Spike Lee's films. Well, no, but I mean, you know, this is the best I'm a style. fan. There's like five or six great movies. I'm a fan of some movies of his, not, yeah. not of him. Yes, yeah, and, and I'll accept it. I'm from New York, so I know people don't like Spike Lee. As of now, we're doing directors that we like. Yeah, and Spike Jones is one of them. Um, very good uh, director there. And, we'll get to uh, him a little later after we do some movie news. And, yeah. Um, we're also going to discuss some other films. We have uh, I, I went and saw The Room. As, uh, I, I've seen it. I've seen it many times. It's a favorite bad movie of mine. Uh, it came out in two thousand three. Uh, directed and written and starring and produced by <laughs> the wanna, one and only Tommy, Tommy Wiseau. Me, if you want to call it that, Wiseau. I, luckily, Wiseau. he just showed me a five minute version on YouTube, and it was genius, pure so, genius. <laughs> well, we'll get into that a little bit more later, and uh, that's if we have time. I don't think we'll spend that much time on Spike Jones. We'll see. He's yeah, only, I mean, he's, he's only, only he's a four film director, but he's got a great a viewer of music video. And we do have the Golden Globes to discuss, so that yes. might take a while too. We'll see. Um, and if we get if we get to all of that, um, we also are going to do some television um, yeah. as well. Uh, mm-hmm. We had some premier, big premieres this uh, this week. Yeah, and, yeah, um, yeah. Archer in particular, and Archer then, uh, season Girls. six yeah. for for us at least. I'm yeah. sure that there were a lot of films that uh, that premiered or not films uh, television series. That, Agent, 
Um, oh, so Agent Carter yeah. premiered on ABC. Yeah, so choke on something. Yeah, yeah I was choking on that. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, so we, we had a lot. Well, a lot of premieres this week, and um, but those. Were, I, I'm going to probably do a full review of Girls if we have time. I don't know. If oh, we'll so, you, so you saw it then? Yeah, yeah. Time. I watch okay. it. I watch it late, like three in the morning. Did you see Archer night. too? Do what? Did you catch up with Archer yet? Yes, okay. I did. But you're not caught up. Yeah, so yeah I, I got to do Archer Vice. So we're not gonna. We're not gonna. Sure, we're gonna do a review of Archer. Be. Not that Archer's like a plot is important. No, 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 no. But I love to watch. In Minota. Season five is is there's spoilers in season five. Yeah, yeah and Rather, Rather was like, is it? It's not uh, episodic. And I said it is because the tinnitus joke running gag, Lana's big hands. I mean, there's a lot of running gags that you would only know if you saw it from the beginning. So. Yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah. Katya, absolutely. Mary, Mary, mm-hmm. the other Mary. <laughs> there's so many things. But, but uh, uh, yeah, so like I, I, we probably won't get into Archer in, in detail yeah, yet. Yeah, no. um, hopefully you'll get caught up so we can do week to week on that. But as of now, we'll probably just tackle girls, um, tackle women. Women. We're just going to tackle people. Uh, <laughs> and, so well, if we get to that, if we have time, we may not. Um, this, the, we've got a lot of stuff planned today, but um, we will see. And uh, so anyway, I guess we'll get into the news. Um, a c- couple movies that didn't, well, one that got released this week, one that got released um, a couple weeks ago. We discussed it on the uh, I think do we in the interview did we discuss that last week? Yes. Or was it we, no, no, we ago? did. We just no, was it the week? It was I got two back? weeks ago, I think. Yeah. Yeah, when I got um, back. Yeah. We, we 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 did a review of that on that podcast or podcast, which I think was the third podcast. Episode three. That we did. Episode so three. Episode three should have the interview. Um, we we went into detail Revenge on that. Stuff. Um, but this week though, they they announced uh, it was early um early this week um that it made three thirty one million dollars online. That's crazy. I don't know if that includes the movie. I don't think so. I think it's just. No, that I think online. that's just video on demand. And then what happened? We said in the theaters it made how much? Twenty seven or uh, something like that. Yeah, I mean, it, made, it made a decent fifty amount million of, dollars for a stupid that, movie in two weeks is great. Right? And and uh, and a little spoiler on how we thought about it. If you haven't listened to episode three, oh, that's why we talked stupid about movie. Uh, yeah. I don't think it's terrible, but yeah, I mean, yeah, so it's making thirty one yeah. million dollars online. Obviously, there's a big controversy about yeah. it. Um, we discussed that already, but. Thirty-one million dollars is uh, that's a lot of Isn't money it, yeah. for for a movie that um, wasn't great. And well, I, mean, <laughs> uh, I mean, obviously, you, you couldn't just, you couldn't do that without anything like like yeah. you know, a movie like um, even Boyhood, which is a, a big yeah. hit now. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it was it was a hit uh, o- well, overall. Yeah, the day it came out, I think. <laughs> but just because of the hype around the movie, yeah, yeah. Um, and the and the reviews of it are so overwhelmingly high. Um, but like. Like that's not a movie though that you could just release on demand and it's going to make thirty more well, thirty not. million dollars. No, you know? no. Um, you know the interview kind of had um, it got a little lucky with that I think. But yeah. I do think it's cool though because it shows that you can make some money doing that. Yeah. Um, you know if you if if we moved it, I, I I'm excited about the whole on demand thing, yeah, yeah. Um, especially with just the way that um, Amazon and iTunes and everything just being able to rent stuff like the day it's in theaters. I, like I think that's a great idea. Yeah, I do. I do. Um, obviously, it hurts the the theaters and theaters, hurts the studios yeah. probably to two degree as well. And then you have like torrenting and things like that that become an issue, um, but uh, it's pretty cool though that we have we have a movie. I don't like the movie, but at yeah. least we have a movie though that's you know oh, making yeah. some money and uh, yeah, dish. It's I, kind I of work important. I work at Dish, and uh, they just got the film, and uh, it's been like I mean I was there Saturday doing overtime, and everybody who called in to order a pay per view or video on demand was for the interview. Yeah. It's a huge hit. Big, big move for us. People are... Uh, well, apparently, though, people are still going to the theater, though. Yeah, still in theaters. Because, yeah. No, no, I'm saying... Apparently, oh, no, there's, saying. there's pe- people aren't Segway. just staying home and watching the interview. I would much rather you go see that yeah. than Taken 3, which yeah, released... Yeah, we, we discussed last week. ...to 40, a whopping $40, 40 million. dollars. Yeah, for the final episode. Oh, Taken 3. Do, do, is the, do people really care about this movie that much? I, I, Obviously, forty million. I was surprised at that when I you when I saw that in the paper yesterday. What do you think of the Taken series? I, I mean, we I, we discussed. It. I loved Taken one. You know, the whole yeah, well, you know, good luck, and then blah blah blah. And then two was kind of cliche, and horrible, and stupid. It's, and then part three. I mean, from what I've seen, it, it just looks like you know the mother's dead, and now he's got to save the kid, but he's using the kid as bait to lure everybody out, and he's in the behind the scenes, and the uh, government's at them. Whatever, I guess people want to say goodbye this way. Like the way Return of the King made billions of dollars and it won an award for the last of uh, Peter Jackson's crappy Lord of the Rings series. But I mean, the people went out. <laughs> Don't get me into I know we're going to lose uh, Lord make of the Rings fan. Bro. Oh, you know I feel Don't do that. Anyway, so we're talking about Taken. I think that's what's going on. I think people want to see uh, whatever his name is, because I forgot the character's name. And... Liam Neeson. No, no, but his character. Was yeah, that. who knows. Whatever, Liam Neeson's final... That, that's his character name in every movie. 
It's just, but but, but being that we know that he was a government agent, I'm pretty sure this is the government. So now he's going to kill the government? Yeah. Come back from JFK? Well, no. What, are they gonna do? what yeah, do you think? Uh, I don't care. you never seen any? No, I saw the first one and I saw the second one and uh, I don't no. care to see the third one. But I mean, did you like part one at least? I think it's okay, yeah. I mean, it's fine. It's a totally fine action. The guest game. is better than, than uh, Tegas? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> but no, that's... Uh, those are two different things. But, uh, yeah, uh, but uh, no. Are they? <laughs> I don't know. You haven't seen the movie. Right. Well, see. you're right. Yeah, but I'm just saying that... I mean, I, well, you're right. I mean, uh, it's tongue-in-cheek for the guest. But I'm saying... Action films? And I yeah, mean, it's know. solid. Totally fine. I don't have any problems. How about this? Take and Die Hard. What's the matter? Oh, that's, that's a stupid <laughs> question. Come on. That's not fair. But you could do that with a lot of movies, though, not just action films. Just in case, you know, he means he loves Die Hard better. Oh, the next Tony Black. Yeah, <laughs> just in case you had an idea. Yeah, People yeah. are like, wait, Take is better than Die Hard? Take better than that. Yeah, no, no. Die Hard clearly is the winner in that situation. Now, I, I think Taken's a fine movie, though. Just, yeah. But who cares? Like, why are they making these? Like, I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty sure this has made more than both films put together. Because Taken was like a sleeper hit. It was yeah. in theaters. It, was, yeah, it, it did well on video. Yeah, I saw it on video right. and I loved it. Part two probably made like five bucks if it made anything. No, it did pretty well. Did it part actually, two? Yeah. Um, and it was did it make 40 shocking. million opening weekend? I don't know. Opening weekend, to be honest. I remember it. I think it crossed 50 though at one point. Now, that might have been consecutive weekends. I don't know. Yeah, it had to be. But, yeah, no, I think it made a fair amount of money because especially just uh, until reviews came out. Now, reviews for this film, though, still. This one had a 10% on Rotten Tomatoes the other day. Now, Take obviously, that's critic reviews. Say what you want. I, I generally go by critic reviews. Not, I mean, it's a, it's, no, a, yeah, you it's a percentage of how many people like the movie. So when 10% of you know, critics like your movie, obviously they're critics, but who, you know, who cares? That's still a bad number yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, for Taken 3. I don't know what it's at right now. Let me look that up real quick. But, um, yeah, 40 I mean, million on the weekend. we got to be 50 million today. It's got an 11% on Rotten Tomatoes right now. 72 user, though. Uh, I, I still am going to have to lean with the the critics on this one and say that um, it's probably no good. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not going to go see it. I'm not going to pay to see that movie. Um, How about cable? So if somebody wants to pay us to go see the end review. Oh, yeah, movie, yeah. I mean, we've been pushing for that. Um, we will absolutely. But you won't watch it on cable when it comes out on cable? No, no. HBO? I, I have no desire. Cause <laughs> the, the, the thing about that is if a movie, if a movie looks fine, yeah. It doesn't mean that it's worth my time. True. Um, because Netflix, as much as people hate on Netflix for not having good titles on there, there's a billion things on Netflix that I would much rather watch than Taken 3. Uh, you know, same with like Transformer. Any, any of those movies that looks like, that looks fine. Yeah. It's not, oh, okay. it's not, unless it's yeah. something I'm putting on in the background while I'm yeah, yeah, or yeah. something like that. But I still would rather just watch Archer again than <laughs> watch Taken 3 on, on, on even on Netflix. When I'm I think that's interesting that you do that. For well, someone who loves film... Um, it's like the other day when I was folding the clothes, like, I put on sightseers, which I did enjoy. Um, but I, I got pissed because I, like, I can't put it on the background. I wanted to watch it. It's on so, that's clothes. a subtle film. It's hard I, to yeah, put that I, on the background. But you do, you, you say you put movies in the background while you do other work, and I find that interesting. Well, I mean, you're not really I, I do television more often than movies. Oh, more TV. Okay, okay. It, that's that's what I mean. Like, I, I don't anything that I actually care about. I don't put on in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like in movies, like remember the campaign with Will Ferrell. <laughs> yeah. That's the kind of stuff I put on in the background. Exactly. Kind of it's right, something yeah. I don't give a crap about at all. And when I'm working on work and stuff like that, then whatever. Yeah. Because yeah. the way my my room is set up, I have my computer, and then to the left of it, my TV is mounted on the wall, so I can see it kind of in my peripheral. Yeah. And so I just have stuff. I just have stuff on all the time. Yeah. yeah. Um. You know. Generally, television though, um, and it just, it works for me. But like I said, like I'm not gonna go watch a movie that I'm like, like you know, I watched Boyhood the other day. That's a movie that I sat down and watched for three hours. I didn't just put it on the background yeah, because yeah. if I care about it, then that's what's gonna happen. But yeah. if I don't, it's just gonna sit in the background. Yeah, I don't know. So I got anyway, you. we'll move on because that that took a while. Um, <laughs> to the Golden Globes, which happened last yes. night. Um, I Globes. actually didn't watch most of it. I, I watched the opening um, half, and then uh, I was I was doing stuff. But um, some interesting stuff happened. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know that I agree with everything. Uh, I, I am I am fair overall. If I had to say, I, I'm happy with most of the winners. Um, I was actually no, no, pretty no, no, no. upset by the nominations when they came out. Um, not for everything. I think they, they hit television really mm-hmm. well. Um, mm-hmm. All all the ca- you know all the categories for television, um, uh, for the most part. Like I, I like most of the stuff that got nominated in those cases. Um, obviously, in in television, um, I, I was I was extremely excited about um, yeah. the affair winning, taking home an yeah, award. No, Ruth about. Wilson for the affair for best actress. Um, I mean, you know, so I, I thought they did a good job of that, mm-hmm. but. I, I don't know about the Best Picture nominations, uh, at least for drama. Um, I mean, comedy and whatnot, like Grand Budapest got nominated. Um, 
I don't know. I was I was really upset about by by some of the nominations this year. Um, I'm looking at this; it's horrible. So so I mean, we can go through like uh, so last night. I mean, I'm just gonna go in order. Um, you know, best best motion picture drama, Boyhood won for that. Mm-hmm. I have finally seen that now. Um, yeah. and I think I think it's it's an incredible achievement. Um, mm-hmm. I, it's not my favorite film of the year by any means, but I think it's totally acceptable for that to be nominated for something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, and it, like that's that's a movie that should be nominated just for the sheer balls of, you know, <laughs> what he did with that movie. Um, and then, but then you have Foxcatcher that got nominated uh, mm-hmm. for Best Picture. Um, I mean, Imitation Game, which I, I haven't I have not seen. I'm not going to claim to have seen that. Um, looks very good, but not, I don't know that it's like a Best Picture. I agree with you. That's why I'm saying like, the category. I, I totally think Benedict. Should be nominated. I haven't even seen the movie, but mm-hmm. just from the trailer, I'm like, that's a that's a worthy nomination. Same with uh, Theory of Everything, which also got nominated for Best Picture. Yeah, I don't understand that. It's like when you have a great performance, that's great, and that's what nominated I nominated mean, yeah. for Best Actor. Yeah, yeah, but that doesn't necessarily mean, like when the when the even like these movies got good reviews, but it doesn't mean like there's just so many other bigger like I'm okay with Selma as a Best Picture. Yeah, that, I was gonna say that's the only um, one that I can see being nominated. And Boyhood, that, yeah. even Boyhood, those it's it's still. It's a small film, though, and it just—I don't know. It's you've been fighting, boys. I, 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 I do like—I love the film. I haven't I really seen it, but like I've heard lot. only good things. Yeah. Um, but I just—I'm. So, we're talking about awards, though. This is yeah. has nothing to do with the actual merits of a film. Okay, okay. <laughs> That's the yeah. fact of the matter. I mean, all these award ceremonies every year they get it wrong. It happens all the time. Yeah. But this is one of the first years, though, that I've been legitimately confused by the the picks. I, mean, I, agree, with thing, I agree with it's you. It's one thing to pick, like um, you know, it's I don't know, I, like boy, Boyhood. I understand. For the most part, but like, I guess this just isn't a year of big films. Like last year, you had Gravity or something like that. I mean, Interstellar this year was supposed or not? Yeah, that was, that was two years out. ago actually. No, was that last year? Interstellar Gravity? was not even. Oh, Gravity. Gravity was, was last year, but Interstellar was never nominated. I didn't see any of it. Well, but re- reviews weren't unanimously. You know, That's right, uh, because of that. Yeah, it, it got like yeah. a you know, it, like it was like in the seventies percentage wise. Mm-hmm. People, you know, most people liked it, but um, yeah. you know, the, like I don't know, it wasn't like it wasn't like. Like Boyhood got a ninety eight or something. Yeah. Like everyone loved that film. Um, I say I keep saying it got. It's, it didn't earn a, a score by any means. It just it's a percentage. Like like I said, um, you know. Uh, I, I just it's surprising me though to see small films that uh, I would rather like the the big problem with this category is that Whiplash didn't get nominated. Uh, well, I really won an award. But... True. Yeah. Uh, and I'm really happy that he yeah, won best for um, Best Sporting J.K. Simmons, Simmons, who is fantastic in it. I yeah. really think Miles Teller could have easily won as well. If um, he was not made, but yeah. I don't understand why that film is not in the Best Picture category. It's, it's yeah. baffling to me. Um, you know, especially when you have all these other smaller titles. Like, Foxcatcher did pretty well. A lot of mm-hmm. critics liked it. Um, but I don't understand why that's a Best Picture nomination. I agree with you. I mean... Um, I, Performance, yeah, absolutely. Steve Carell's fantastic in it, but like, I don't know. I just, I don't understand. Um, and then, like, I mean, like, I think generally they get the best actress, best, uh, you know, best actor. Well, those remember, categories the, they do fairly well every year. Um, I don't. I still think you need to give it to Gyllenhaal for Nightcrawler, uh, yeah, yeah, but I, that's not the kind of role that's going to win an award mm-hmm. ceremony like this. Uh, I'm glad he at least got a nomination. Yeah, you were um, saying that. Like I said, I, I am missing that uh, Miles Teller isn't nominated. But granted, you do have a lot of great, you know, roles uh, in the Best Actor category. Um, Julian Man, Ju- uh, Julian Man, Julian Moore uh, won for Best Actress, Actually, uh, which is surprising to me. Um, I thought Rosamund Pike for Gone Girl. Was yeah, there. Uh, was I, film. I think that was kind of a given, but yeah. apparently not. Um, I mean, I, I do like that they you know, Reese Witherspoon for a while. Like that's a good nomination. I mean, you've got some good stuff in there, uh, at least in the in the nominations. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I haven't seen Still Alice. It's 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 being released this week. Yeah. Um, not everywhere. We will probably never get it. It, it won't be something that plays anywhere in Houston. Houston. But um, yeah, anyway, and then uh, you know, best motion picture, musical or comedy, Grand Budapest won which, over yeah. Birdman, which is surprising. Surprising, um, but, but I, it, it is I, your I love I, Grand Budapest is on my favorites list. Yeah. Like I said, I have still not seen Birdman, so I, I can't comment on. I'm just still surprised though that Birdman didn't win because that was kind of a I you know did. everybody was like Birdman's the best film of the year. It's like a lot of people were just going crazy about that movie. So, I mean, Grand Budapest did real well. A lot, mm-hmm. a lot of people liked it. It made a lot of money, yeah. a lot more money than everybody ex- expected, but. Um, I'm still surprised that Birdman. But okay, and then the nominations in this category: Into the Woods. Why is in, I get that it's a musical, but why is that nominated for Best Picture? Even if it's so best you could have a comedy? musical in the musical That's category, stupid. and then Saint Vincent, like 
fine movie. I haven't don't seen worry, it. Don't worry, don't worry. But, but, yes, but again, nominate him for best actor if you think the performance is good. <coughs> There's no reason for that movie to be in best in best <laughs> motion picture. Comedy. They did nominate him for best um, actor. You know, but I, but like like I said, the biggest complaint about the Golden Globes is that it's become just a, an award ceremony where everyone or every film will get an award in some category. Yeah, and if you're going down this list, go. You look at it. It's okay. So, uh, Boyhood won picture. Every That's it for Boyhood. Of, yeah, and then uh, Theory of Everything got the actor. Okay, uh, still Alice, which I never even knew about until just now. Yeah, won Best Actress. Grand Budapest won for Best Picture. Um, Michael Keaton, when you were heading up to now, won Best Actor for Birdman. If you look, it's every yeah. And then they gave every Birdman movie every yeah, like everybody got best something. Picture, yeah. Everybody got something. You know, what Boyhood I'm did get director though as well, which is great. Uh, yes, it did. It did. Uh, even though I think everybody in that category could have been could have been they could have walked home with that award. Yeah, uh, I mean Linklater, that's a huge achievement. I'm glad about that. Um, but yeah, no, no, so I guess you give yeah you give you give Birdman House of Cards got the something. screenplay. Yeah. You give Birdman the screenplay, and then you give uh, Wes Anderson the win for, for uh, picture. best picture. Yeah, that's int- that's an interesting choice. Uh, I mean. This is at least it's interesting. That's yeah, the only thing yeah. I can say. I just it's confusing as hell to, because because honestly though it's like if they're gonna do that though they're gonna nominate things in this way. What's the point of voting? You know, like I don't understand. Yeah, like I it's just like a and that's why people have complained about it for the past ten stupid. years. Yeah. They say that it's now become a thing of everyone go get drunk, have a good time, watch the comedians on stage, and all of you're gonna get an award. Exactly. And you know, Golden Globes now uh, uh, you know said you guys were all good and go home. Yeah. And that's why now. Which I was going to bring up, like normally the Golden Globes would have been a blueprint for the Oscars, mm-hmm. but now I'm not even no, so sure no that's way. the case because and that's everybody why wins. If, and... if the Oscars yeah. look anything like this, yeah. I might not watch it. Yeah, like, I mean, I, why would? Yeah, I mean, why? I don't have like, watched it so long, but yeah. I mean, but it's the problem. The like, and I was talking to somebody about this. They're like, you know, somebody made. Uh, we we're um, hanging out at a friend of mine's uh, family last night, and they, they made a comment about. Um, how it's kind of self-involved the whole like like making award ceremony for you know for yourself for yeah, your movies yeah. and I th- but I think the bigger problem is that this these actually matter for these films financially yeah, yeah, it, these yeah. are important and so like yeah. when they when the nominations don't mean anything it's mm-hmm. frustrating it's, it's like, like now everyone's going to go see at least these, every one of these movies yeah like we want people want to see Birdman since day one but now someone's going to say hey still Alice that one best yeah. Actually, just go check it out. You know, I mean, I'm right? happy for, but like Boyhood winning, that's that's important. But yeah, like, I would yeah. much rather see Boyhood win than some of the. And that's going to be nominated for the Oscars. I'm gonna yeah, hands down yeah, say that should. they may win. Just so you know, just so you don't get upset, you know. <laughs> yeah, and some of them also could win. You know, I think I, some I will know. be nominated as well. For It'll be I'm nominated saying, yeah. for sure. Uh, but I'm not sure if these, like, uh, like I you said, Foxcatcher. Yeah, that's not going to be nominated. Imitation Game will not be nominated. Yeah, Theory of Everything will not be. If nominated for if that. they have some sense in yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean but let's get to the good stuff though yeah best TV series drama <laughs> yeah. The Affair that's yeah. awesome I, I'm, I'm extremely <laughs> excited about that I mean it beat out House of Cards, Cards. Downton Abbey and Game of Thrones and The Good Wife I mean that's yes. awesome uh, so I, I mean I can I give them huge props to that because uh, yeah. I love The Affair um even though the finale is, eh, yeah. it's pretty damn good. Yeah. Um, and then Ruth Wilson obviously wins, and then you have Kevin Spacey takes one home. Even yeah. Dominic West. I would have loved to see them give Dominic West that, but I'm really happy that they. Yeah, they yeah. Gave. Of course, like I said, House um, of Cards got something. Yeah, I'm, I'm Kevin Spacey. Yeah. You can take home every award if you want. Um, and Jessica totally Land's fine. loss in the in American Horror Story, which is surprising. Yeah. Even um, Allison Tolman, who I loved in Fargo, she lost out too. So. Yeah. Maggie Jill, I, I will say doing. though the nominations in the TV category I think are perfect. I think this is like a like I really think you know best TV like you get Fargo because of the way that they did them they yeah. they, they categorized it as a mini series. Um, it got nominated for more things. Yeah, uh, I like that. Yeah. So and then it'll also allowed for uh, both Martin Freeman and. Um, uh, Billy Bob Billy to Bob. get nominated. Billy Bob ended up winning. That's, How, that's I don't huge. Know, I, but I told you the True Detectives were canceling themselves out. Now, why was that show not nominated? Uh, True for Detec- best True Detective. Oh, it got nominated for miniseries. Miniseries. Oh, yeah. did it? Yeah, it did. Oh, wait, that's that's, I don't like out. the way they categorize these things. Yeah. It's confusing. It's, yeah. Um, but True Detective was better than Fargo, but I love Fargo. So. Uh, yes, I agree. I do love Yeah, Fargo is a fantastic series, yeah. though, too. Um, I think. Yeah, that's. But I'm glad that they nominated everything. You know, yeah, they split that, it up yeah, in a way that they could get a nominee. Yeah. Like you have both Matthew McConaughey and Woody Harrelson that got nominated, and Martin Freeman and Billy Bob. Like that's awesome. Yeah. 
Uh, I mean, obviously they're better than everyone else, but still, like that's that's cool that they they were you know they didn't just nominate one thing. Yeah. But I also think that that's how it should be, you know, in terms of like like nominate the best performances of course, regardless yeah, of yeah. whether or not they're a part of. Like that's why the movies don't make any sense to me. How anyway. about the how about the TV series musical comedy? Have you ever uh, saw Transparent? No, no, that's a huge win though for and because yeah. it's not actually on television, which is. <coughs> um, it, is I love Jeffrey Tambor. Much, I, yeah, I, no, I'm a I huge fan of Jeffrey Rest Tambor. Development, but um, of course. Well, so what are you saying? It's, it's a web series. Or yeah, it's it's a, it, it, well, it's kind of. <coughs> Amazon has their own programming now, oh. and and they, they released a show called Tim Transparent. It's actually in its second season. It's been out for a while. It's been on like if you if you're ever on Vimeo or uh, Amazon on demand, like it's always like the banner at the top. I mean, they've yeah. been advertising it forever. So I've known about it. I've just never like sh- committing to shows. I have too many. I have too many things to watch. But um, I'll, I'll watch it eventually. <laughs> But, uh, <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, I mean uh, that's that's a huge win though for them because it's it's you know, <coughs> it's acknowledging the fact that this outside programming is just as good as everything else that's on television. Same with House of Cards, you know. Yeah. Like, that's like it's, it's important that those kinds of shows get nominated because well, they the, are the just as good. Wasn't even out yet. It doesn't even start until like next week or something. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's interesting. I mean, you got like. I am surprised Transparent won over Orange of the New Black. I and guess they gave, the that, they gave it last year, yes. though. I think Orange of yeah, the New Black yeah. won last year. So um, it's cool. I mean, I, I think this is a t- television they did pretty pretty well yeah. last night. Um, but movies, I don't I don't know what happened. Other than Boyhood, I do agree with. I mean, if, like out of those nominations, I'm glad Boyhood won. Um, like I said, I think Whiplash, though, is still the best film of the year, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, not my favorite. It was on my list. It was like number three or whatever. But definitely the best movie that's come out. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's it's confusing. Anyway, we're going to move on to Spike Jones because we were almost at the half hour mark. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's that's the Golden Globes for you. I mean, overall, I mean, I confused, but I'm I'm f- I'm somewhat excited about some of the stuff that uh, that happened. So. I don't know. We'll see. Um, and uh, so we'll move on. Uh, we, every week we do our, our director of the week. Um, basically, the reason we do this is um, we have we like a lot of movies. We like a lot of directors that are, don't have movies that are you know being released everywhere you know or released currently. And so we want to talk about older films too, yeah. not just cl- uh, current stuff. And so we we, we we nominate a director each week. Um, it's basically generally a director that we like, yeah. um, f- at least for now, until we start running out of directors we like. Um, <laughs> And we generally try and find a director that has at least a couple movies to talk about. Um, and Spike Jones, I mean, uh, he's been making movies and like television, television, all kinds of stuff yeah, for a long time. Yeah, he started out in in the early nineties, uh, you know, with the advent of uh, MTV two. Um, and of course, uh, one of my favorite. Uh, I mean, we never get into music. Uh, Jeremy's really good with current music, um, but one of my favorite bands of all time is the Beastie Boys. And um, I remember watching Sabotage for the first time and saying. A fucking genius, yeah. I- I- irreverent, you know, a mixture of seventies cop shows, you know, something that the Beastie Boys would definitely uh, uh, work with. Um, and you know, it was the first time I ever saw, saw Spike or heard of Spike Jones, and um, you know, he was an up and coming, you know, uh, video. You know, he uh, made a few other videos. He did for R.E.M. Bajork was like his muse. Yeah. A lot of cool Bajork uh, videos, and then he did his first feature film, which was Being John, John Malkovich, which you didn't finish yourself. Well, I've I like I said, oh, I, I did, I've been yeah. I, I've seen it before. I, it's been a long time though since I've seen it. Um, I, I, I honestly don't recollect much of it, um, aside from the fact that I remember watching it, going, "This is strange." Yeah. Um, and it that that was at the time the first Spike Jones I had seen film I had seen. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I remember going, "That's interesting." I and then I don't remember anything else. So I re I, I started rewatching it last night. Um, I had to I had to wake up super early, so I didn't uh, to, to come get you. It's super early. I would wake up at eleven a.m. today. Four forty seven. Eleven a.m. to take Carlos to the to the hospital. So at two o'clock last night, I was like, I started being John Malkovich, and I watched about an hour of it, and then was like, I, I need I need to go to sleep. Yeah. Um, and so that's so what about the, how, with the first hour. What, what? Uh, basically, like you know, he gets. Uh, I got got to the point where he gets. Um, he starts telling others about it, and mm-hmm. um, he gets uh, Cameron Diaz to. She wants to go through go a second, second time. time. That's yeah. that's where I'm at. Um, which isn't. It's about an hour. It's not quite yeah. at an hour into the film. Um, I, I really like what I've seen so far. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Even having seen all of Spike Jones films, I think I think Being John yeah. Malkovich is still really strange. Yeah. Um, yeah. In a great way. Um, Being John Malkovich was also written by Charlie Kaufman Charlie as Kaufman. well. 
um, who uh, I mean, obviously, we'll mention at least at least one other time, and uh, he wrote Adaptation, which is one yes. of uh, Spike Jones' later his, films. His second film. Um, second film. Yeah, he's only got four. It's so, so strange. Four movies. Yeah, yeah. But uh, they are kind of spread out, though, for yeah. the most part. Um, at least. Uh, um, yeah, uh, Markovich was ninety nine, and Adaptation was two thousand two. One two thousand okay, two. two. And, but Adaptation was such a great. Big hit with the Oscars and you know, won all. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Nicolas Cage, oh my God. <laughs> I mean, you know, we all talk about Nicolas Cage, but that, I think that was like the last of his good Hollywood movies, the Cage. We're getting ahead of ourselves. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I just hey, I, we, we didn't say we turned our phones off, yes. so uh, <laughs> vibrate, vibrate's going to happen, but... Yeah. Um, no, yeah, I mean, uh, I think we're getting ahead of ourselves. I mean, I'm sorry. I, what, what do you think of being John Malkovich, though? Oh, oh yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm like, in my head, I'm talking about it. Um, I liked being John. I remember watching it for the first time, um, and I was amazed by it. Too. I was like, "Oh, it's, it's such an irreverent movie!" And and the fact that Malkovich is in it, I mean, it's just a genius coup. Cool. And you know, the fact that you go through when you come out, you're out, you're in New Jersey, and yeah. it's just uh, such a. If you're a New Yorker, you know that that's funny because um, like one of the worst states in the world to be in. <laughs> um, but it's it's just good. I mean, you know, John Cusack. As the henpecked husband, and then that uh, hair, yeah, his hair in that movie is <laughs> yeah. uh, is something else. What is that? I, 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 I do think I, I think I have to give Spike Jones the award for finding the strangest professions for <laughs> characters in his films, aside from where the wild things are, obviously, because it's a, about a kid. Yeah. Um, but you know, you have uh, John Cusack plays a, a puppeteer. Uh, in in the movie, and <laughs> the, the sequence where uh, he has like the nun and the the priest humping the walls yeah, right. and, uh, <laughs> is one of the strangest things, but also hilarious. Like I like the I I love he doesn't he doesn't mock his characters like he truly cares about them. Yeah. But at the same time, though, he has these just really obscure things that they do <laughs> that are very funny. But it's but I feel like what he does so well is he doesn't like poke is he, he's not really poking fun at him like i feel like yeah, it's yeah. it's almost like a profession that that I, I i also i credited spike jones for being the person that comes up with these characters technically yeah, yeah, it is charlie yeah. kaufman yeah um uh, i don't know if they ever wrote together i don't think they no, did no. um but regardless though like I, I i love what he does with with the characters in his films so, like he has these obscure people i mean you have you have uh john cusack in, in being John Malkovich, and then you have Charlie Kaufman himself playing, you know, or Nicolas Cage playing Charlie Kaufman uh, in in adaptation. Yeah. That's obscure in itself. Yeah. Uh, and he also has a twin in the movie, uh, also played by Nick Cage, of course. Um, and then you have, and then you have her, which he plays a um, a he writes. It's set in the future, obviously, where he writes love letters for people uh in the future like that's a, it's it's great like yeah, yeah. um so I, I love these premises i love these characters that he sets up in all of his films and being john malkovich starts with a i mean with just some really obscure sequences of, of puppetry and uh and like the, the sequence where john cusack um he He's kind of he's got a crush on uh, the girl leader works with. I'm going blank on her name. Catherine um, Keener. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and so he sets up the puppets and has them like like dresses them up to look like himself and her and has them yeah. make out. It's such a strange sequence. Even now, um, one thing I will say about being John Malkovich that's surprise, especially after seeing her and things like that. Yeah. Um, now that he has like a budget for, I mean, not that he didn't have a budget, but like like he now he's, he's his films cost a lot more yeah, now yeah. in terms of. Uh, uh, maybe not uh, with inflation. I don't know, but um, you know, like like he's got like the film. His, his like her is a gorgeous movie. When you yeah, go back to being John Malkovich, it's like it's kind of ugly. And ugly. It's, it's kind of before he had like I, I would say other than like from a writing standpoint, like he doesn't have as much of a visual s- style in being mm-hmm. John Malkovich. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, it, but, but don't you think that the dark visuals were for a reason? You know, oh, absolutely! No, yeah, it's yeah, totally yeah, fitting. Yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. it's like um, it's just a little muted. I mean, yeah, which is fine. Yeah. It's like an office space yes. where you have kind of you play with the greens and the browns yeah, and, yeah. and kind of it, that color palette. Um, obviously, in comparison to like her, which is kind of yeah, supposed it's to be very, very romantic lovely. and um, yeah. absolutely. Um, but like it's even just the set design and stuff. Though, like it's it's a lot more. Uh, you can just I don't know. It's. <coughs> even in the way that he moves the camera and things like that and mm-hmm. shot choice like he doesn't it's not that he doesn't have style at all but it's he hasn't fully developed that yeah. style and like I think her is an example of like where he has total creative control over everything and it's just kind of um, you know 
he goes all out, um, yeah. and it's uh, it's it's interesting to go back. And it, just like with any director, though, if you go back and watch like um, you know David Fincher's first film, or yeah. like something like or like Martin Scorsese Easy. back in the day, um, you know, it's it's interesting to see just kind of how that style has changed. Over well, that's the true. Years. That's true. Um, so yeah, so um, and then you know uh, Cameron Diaz, we didn't mention, but she's also in that and stripped down, she, which is stripped down because we we were talking about how not naked, but uh, Amy Adams in in her and got no makeup on, yeah, and same thing with uh, um, Cameron Diaz there, but then yeah, then he did a bunch more videos and then he did adaptation of his second film, which was nominated and won uh, uh, Academy Award for screenplay for screen uh, best right. supporting actor Chris Cooper and screenplay. Which uh, I have to say, I think adaptation is my favorite uh, to this day. I don't know. Like, yeah, it gets it's manic, it's fast, it's crazy, it's just like a, a Charlie and Donald. It's um, my favorite Nick Cage movie, you, uh, other than maybe <laughs> Face Off. Other than Face Off is my favorite. Other than <laughs> favorite, yeah, other than Face Off, uh, okay, it's so. my favorite Nick Cage role. Yeah. He's actually genuinely great in it. Um, I mean, not that he's never been great in things, but uh, he's pretty bad in a lot of stuff. Uh, <laughs> But uh, he's very good in adaptation. It's almost like it's like Punch Drunk Love with Adam Sandler. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's, like it's, it's, yeah. it's like his restrained kind of darker movie that he yeah. gets to actually have some decent character stuff uh, yeah. and actually gets to act. Uh, yes, yes. He plays in the movie. He plays Charlie Kaufman, uh, who and, wrote Being John Malkovich and Adaptation. <laughs> so in the, in the it's hard, it's hard to, to to vocalize. Like I guess he. Charlie Kaufman wrote the character. He, he basically wrote a movie about himself. Oh, um, yes. And okay. in the film, uh, Nicolas Cage has a twin, um, Charlie Donald. Kaufman's brother, Donald, Donald Kaufman. um, who uh, he starts competing with because <laughs> Donald is a, a better writer than right. him, or at least a more successful writer. Yeah. And, you know, he's kind of the auteur. Uh, and uh, and Donald just kind of writes like uh, shitty action films and things like that that, uh, that become really popular. Um, and so there's this whole conflict between that and uh, about trying to, you know, kind of stay true to your art, art and then, but yeah. then also also be successful at what you're doing at all um and uh i mean obviously that's been done before but i think um it's an interesting way to do it yeah, um, even now too. it's yeah. very it's very different um what do you think of adaptation yeah i like the adaptation and again i, I think i like binge on much more but um um it, it's very funny it's well written and like like i said i guess i get lost in the end because the end it just starts getting more manic and manic. it goes real crazy and, and like, they go into the woods and stuff yeah. and uh meryl yeah. streep and uh yeah. I, i'm going blank on who played chris, uh chris cooper is it, yeah, yeah, yeah. They go in the woods though, and uh, <laughs> they're on drugs, and just it, it gets it gets really weird. Um, it's like just have Meryl Streep on drugs. I remember reading the movie came out. He said, "I just want to make a movie about Meryl Streep being on drugs." Well, and I think it like I mentioned this. I think last week. I think I think it has the greatest bizarre sex scene in any movie, <laughs> where Nick Cage fantasizes about Meryl Streep, Meryl Streep. having sex with him. Uh, is one of the, the the most awful things I've seen in a cinema, uh, but also the most fantastic thing I've ever seen in a movie at the same time. Uh, but yeah, no, no, it's a it's a very it's a very good film. Uh, I, I it also. Even though it's ridiculous, it still can make me cry sometimes. It, it, uh, the like, ending, yeah, I, the ending, I, right? I like, or not the ending, but the, um, the there's some really good character stuff in it, uh, yeah. and that's what that's what I love about all those films. Is they they all have heart at the <laughs> core, um, and you know a lot of them are about loneliness and about just uh, you know, connecting with people. That's I think her is a, the best example yeah. of that thematic mm-hmm. element. But all of his films are though, like like being John Malkovich, like like you know he's this guy that's in a relationship, but also or is it a relationship or is his sister the uh, Cameron Diaz? I think it's his girlfriend. It's his girlfriend. No, that's his yeah. He's creepy. not. Yeah, yeah no, exactly. No. I, like I said, I haven't seen the whole film. But, uh, he's living with her though. Exactly. That, but yeah. um, but uh, I don't think we see. He doesn't sleep with her though. No, no, no. But no. That, I don't. Yeah. Because she ends up falling in love with John Malkovich, and he falls in love with Catherine Keener. So. Yeah. Spoiler alert for me for a movie that's fifteen years old. Fifteen years old. Um, <laughs> But no, no, uh, it's, uh, all of his films kind of have that, like, a lot of those kind of elements, uh, especially, I mean, even, like, Kaufman's films, too, though, like, yeah. they, they kind of parallel each other, like, uh, Kaufman did Eternal Sunshine, which also has that kind of, you know, it's about connection, it's about, like, all of these, um, you know, uh, sometimes it, it's through the form of, like, romance, but then, like, in her, or in, mm-hmm. uh, in uh, it's, well, Kaufman didn't write her, I'm going in a, in a yeah. loop here, but, um, you know, uh, Spike Jones and, and Charlie Kaufman. He also did uh, Spike or uh, Kaufman also did uh, Synecdote, New York. Synecdote. I'm sure that's Which not is good. You, it's good. Is it Schenectady or what is it? How do you pronounce the name? Isn't Synecdoke? 
Isn't it Dochi? That's a weird it's a name. Yeah, I, I know it's like a but, place in yeah, New York, but, though, right? Yeah, New York. And, but Great in the film. movie, it's still pronounced differently. And, and it's really good. Really good movie. But like all of those films are kind of about... I mean, I really think like all of the characters are very similar. They just yeah. they, they have different professions. And um, and obviously, the, the story goes in different directions. But um, they all kind of have that underlying theme um, in, in all the way through the rest of Spike, uh, Spike Jones' career. I'm going to call him Spike Lee. Spike but actually, that's going to happen. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, that's just kind of something that, that, that he brings up a lot, and uh, and so I think like all of his films though can be genuinely touching as well as weird and True. funny and strange, and um, that's something I really admire because yeah. uh, that's a hard line to run. The only one I would say isn't would be where the wild things are, um, which yeah, we can get to now. We can segue into yeah, because like I said, after he did this big film adaptation, which won awards. Again, he did videos for artists forever for like seven, yeah, he did R E M. Things are was two thousand nine. Uh, Tenacious D, then he did Weezer, great video, Buddy Holly. Um, yes, then, uh, yeah, then he did uh, some short films. He did a TV movie based on... He did some acting as well. Like he, he yeah, he's in, in other people's films. Oh, like that's right, he's in Jackass. Like he did Jackass during yeah. that time, actually. But then Where the Wild Things Are, his third film came out in 2000. The man works a lot. And he takes yeah. director credits on a lot of those things, too. He does. Like if you, yeah, he's actually... He like, if you look through like, his filmography, like, he actually yeah. is credited as a director. So, the man's working a lot. He's not just... Oh, no, 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 I'm not saying... Yeah, I'm not saying um, I'm wrong about but, it. But, like, I wish he'd made movies more often. Like, I yes, don't know, like, I agree with you there. Because, uh, man, he's making some good stuff. And uh, Where the Wild Things Are, they're probably my least favorite. I think yeah, most, I it's most my, people's. My I think it's a good movie, though. Yeah. Um, but it, it's just... I don't know that there's enough substance to that story to really yeah, for it to be it a did. whole hour and forty minutes. Yeah. Um, great kid, the kid is amazing yeah. in it. I think, yeah. um, and I mean, I love the book. It's based off the, you know the yeah. eleven page mm-hmm. chart. Maybe it might be a couple more than that. I don't yeah. know, but it's a really short children's novel or a not novel little, little book. A picture book um, that everyone has read. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I think it, it there's it goes to some interesting places. Mm-hmm. It's just I just don't know that there's enough enough for me to I kind of about it. Agreed. chew on. Um, and that's what the critics all agreed and that's why the movie just basically disappeared. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Um, it's yeah. gorgeous. It's well done. It's, you know, it's, I mean, uh, I, I like I if anything I got an opportunity to watch it because my kids wanted to see it. Yeah. And we watched it and they, everybody was bored. My kids mm-hmm. were bored, my my ex-wife was bored. And then even I fell asleep. I was like uh, whatever. I mean, the people the voices were kind of cool. It was cool to see. Yeah. You know, costumes are good. Yeah, the costumes. And the, again, the kid who plays Max is really, really cool. Yeah, like he's outstanding guy. in the film. Yeah, but... Yeah, it just... It, overall, it's just kind of... Eh. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know. There, there is a good scene, though, where the, the, he there's a threat of being eaten that's yeah, yeah, genuinely yeah, yeah, yeah. Terrifying. terrifying. Like, that, that, that was almost where I would yeah. have liked to see... I would have liked to see more of that. that. Um, yeah, well, but we don't always get what we want. I think. I mean, I understand. <laughs> that's a hard movie to make. Um, and I think it was done pretty well. I think it was you know, bold. Yeah, I, don't know that you could, I don't know that you could give that to any other great director and then Agreed. make something that would be extraordinary. I don't know. I, I just... I don't know the, the source well, remember, I mean, the, the history of that book was like so many people... Have been wanting to make it. You'll see Miss Spielberg, yeah, in the late '80s, wanted to do it. But I mean, you know, just the fact that it went to him, and you know, I at first I was like, yeah, not bad. And then you know, they went with that, like you know, how to make. Like you said, it was a 17-page kid book, and they made it into an hour and a half film. It's like not much you can do with that. No, it's like so. Yeah, it's it's a challenge. So I'm I'm gonna give him that one because I just don't I, I don't know that I, I don't love it by any means. But no, no, it's, yeah, it's yeah. solid. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, I definitely think it's 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 the the best looking. Well, her it's the, kind of the transition into the you know yeah. like having more of a budget and yeah. uh, you know being able to kind of do whatever he wants with cinematography and stuff like that. Um, and so he there's a lot of cool stuff in the movie, but that's about all I I have to say about it. Um, and then he did her, which I think yeah. um, is the my second favorite. Obviously, you fell but, asleep. During I fell asleep, but not only because I'm on, I'm on medication for my, my ankle. Yeah, um, but I did like it. Taking I liked it. Drugs. It was very endearing. It got weird later on, which was fine. It was, I mean, for the for the whole science fiction concept, because I, I was asking Jeremy, they never tell you what year it is. So, I mean, obviously, I it's not. They do at least. It's not like twenty one hundred, but it's somewhere in the two thousands, maybe twenty twenty. Subtle future. Yeah, like a, it, you know, it might subtle, be forty years at most. Maybe, maybe imagine. you know, and, all, and where electronics uh, and computers and like advanced, like, like just enough that it's believable. Yeah, it's it, it's not you know terminated world, but it's like you know you. Can buy stuff wherever you are in a train station, airport, bus stop, and um, yeah, the story's interesting. You know, they they come up with this new uh, um, OS for the computer, and it happens to be a sentient computer that can talk to you and take the shape of what you want. And um, he plays, which is, I like his name, Theodore Twombly, and I'm wondering if 
Spike Jones played with Cy Twombly, one of the greatest artists of uh, the last uh, hundred years. And so his name is Theodore Twombly, and he... It's an obscure enough name that I'm yeah. sure. I, I, think it's, I think I've read that somewhere that it yeah. is. I don't, I don't know what it is, to be honest. Yeah, it's an art. Cy Twombly is a great artist uh, of the first uh, hundred years of the century. If we were good century. at what we did, we'd probably research that. <laughs> and, I mean, exactly. Well, we, I just you. brought it up. So, I mean, I should have done it before. But to make it a little short, um, he downloads the system, takes it home. And uh, also you know, can it's also you can it's portable. You portable, can yeah. You like can a cell yeah, phone, basically. Yeah, it's not he even, has it on his. It's cell like phone. a little. It's like a little. Uh, I don't know. It's like a little book. It's like yeah, a little but it's like leather. a little flip phone. It, yeah, yeah, it's, it's like, like a, a. It's interesting. The futurist. It's got like a, two cameras on it or something. Yeah, yeah. And, has and, one of them front one and, uh, and so you can flip it open yeah. and closed, and uh, it's just a little. It looks. It's smaller than an iPhone. It's like a little booklet. Yeah. I don't know. It's well, it did look interesting little design. I like it. And, and yeah, and, and it's it, simple and, and it makes sense. And after uh, giving information, which seemed like it was kind of cheesy and, and, and short, he ends up getting Scarlett Johansson as his computer, and she names herself Samantha. And uh, you know, one thing leads to another, and they start to fall in love. So um, I liked it. I did. I, I just like I said, I, I only slept because of that. But but I mean, but it was, it was very romantic. It also got a little uh, you know interesting at the end. Like I said, uh, talk about Terminator. I mean, in the end. Uh, I don't. He says no spoilers. So, yeah, no spoilers. Yeah, so that. so in the end, you know, it, it does. Know it gets sad. Spoiler, it, no, yeah, it's, it's a sad true. ending. I, I would have cried if I wasn't sleeping, because I mean, you know, he lost. You know, well, I'm not saying he lost anything, but I'm saying you know, it, it's just a sad ending. But but this happiness. And uh, what do you what do you think about her? Uh, I, I loved her. her. Um, it was it was one of my favorites of last year. It wasn't my number one film. But yeah, uh, you told be, me you liked it a lot. It'd be my top five, I think. Um, I, I think it's up there. I mean, like I said, I haven't seen Being John Malkovich. Yeah. If Being John Malkovich can make me cry, then her it will be up there with her <laughs> adaptation. And um, I, I mean, I think uh, I think it's an outstanding um, return to. I mean, it's been four years since we got a film from. Yeah. Her. No, yeah. I guess it was 2009. I'm thinking it's 2012 still apparently. Um, but no, 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 yeah. Uh, I mean, it's been a while since we got a movie years, from him. It was at least 2013. Oh, yeah, I guess it was 2013. Yeah, last um, year. Yeah, I forget that it's been that long. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, it's. I, I think it's outstanding. I think there's a. It's a really well written script, just mm-hmm. like adaptation. It actually it wasn't written by Charlie Kaufman this time though. Um, it was. Let me look that up. I think he helped write it. I don't know if he was fully credited. So the writer Spike Jones, no. So he he was fully credited as the yeah, um, the, as the screenwriter for that. He also won an Academy Award mm-hmm. for it. Um, did did it win any other awards? Uh, no, just a screenplay. Um, I'm really glad that it did though, because um, I think I think it's a it's a very well written film. Um, I, I I like I, I like the whole idea of like um, you know, just his portrayal of what the future would be like in, in yeah. terms of um, you know give it give it ten years and we'll start you know dating our technology yeah. and obviously I mean obviously just from the trailer you get that as a you know as an element to this movie yeah. but it doesn't hit you over the head with it by any means um, but I, I do like I still I always like that that theme in, in any in any film just when it, when it discusses kind of the you know the way that we're going to interact with each other in, in the future mm-hmm. or in mm-hmm. just in general yeah. um, you know there, there's a, uh, there's a great line at the end um I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of that's minor spoiler if you haven't seen her yet, but you know it's a, there's a line that says I've never loved any way anyone the way I love you, um, and she says uh, me too. Now we know how, yeah. um, and that's a great final like like final line about you know that kind of closes off this um, that whole discussion of like you know. Um, we we've gotten to a point with technology that we don't know how to interact with people, mm-hmm. and um, I mean the film the film tackles that really well without being kind of hammer fisted um, about it, and and there's also like you know the, like the, there's there's all kinds of like metaphorical talk in this movie, and I, I think he does it pretty well without being um, obnoxious. Like there's a line where he's like the the past is just a story we're telling ourselves. And, yeah, um, that was a nice and, line. And like that's really great. Um, and then. Uh, <coughs> I don't know about that. Uh, another outstanding line is you always wanted to, uh, to have a wife without the challenge of actually dealing with something real and I'm glad you found someone from a, um, Rooney Mara who's uh, really great as the she only played she's only in the movie like two minutes though yeah. plays his ex-wife um, and uh, he's in the process of uh, going through a divorce with her um, I, I, I think it's I think it's outstanding I think mm-hmm. um Joaquin Phoenix is just fantastic yeah he's great in this he's um, subtle, especially fun. for a film that 
we literally spend half the movie in a close up of his face. Um, that's yeah. something really hard to pull off. I mean, he does the the humor and like, but also the um, you know just the passion for that character. That that you, this is a movie, and this is something again that, that Spike Jones does so well. This is a movie that um, and it, some audiences did laugh at it. You know, like like this is what a stupid idea. You know, I had a manager that I worked with uh, who was just like, no, I don't watch gay movies about people who fall in love with computers and stuff like that. Uh, um, but, you know, like, like, I mean, lots of people had that reaction to it, but I, I still feel like, like, you know, Spike Jones just, it does, he does, he handles this whole premise in a way, like, this movie could have been, let's make fun of the idiot who, who you know, falls in love with his computer, and yeah. um, and it, it's not, it's, it's, a, it's about a lot more. I mean, yeah, yeah. there's a sequence in the film, it's a sex scene in the film, that... <laughs> could divide audiences i mean yeah. I, like this movie did come out a year ago um but that's that that's a turn that's a point in the movie though that in in the hands of another director mm-hmm. would not be interesting at all in terms yeah. of like it's a, it's it's a scene that that could be really uncomfortable mm-hmm. and there's there's a you know, at a point in it that he cuts to black and mm-hmm. um and you just get the score and and the sound like the you know the, the sound of people having sex yeah. um and it could be silly and it could be it could be um and it's it still is kind of funny in a way but i mean i, I think it's it's genuinely touching and, uh, it was, it was. And like I said, I I loved their relationship. I rooted for him. I wanted him to get the girl. And, you know, I mean, I, I just, you know, I loved it. I, I wanted that to be the case. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I mean, you know, it, I liked it. I liked it, Um, again, better than um, uh, Where the Wild Things Are, that's for sure. For sure. It's <laughs> a step in the right direction. Yeah. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm hoping that we can get something from him. You know, within the next four years, like I don't want to wait another four years to get another movie from him, but um, yeah, I think hers uh, an outstanding achievement. Um, definitely a favorite of mine. Um, it'll be one that I watch again. I mean, this is like the fifth time that I've seen it. Oh, I, yeah, was it with you? So um, I think it's outstanding. And uh, we're at the almost hour mark, so I guess we'll just move on. Uh, I'm going to briefly talk about the room because uh, I the only re- the only reason we're discussing this is because I went to a midnight screening of it uh, here in Houston at a, a theater here called the River Oaks Theater. They play a lot of independent films yeah. and stuff like that. I have to drive way the hell over town, you know, yeah. all across town to get there. Um, but uh, you know, they 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 play like smaller movies that, that don't get like I saw. I remember Place Beyond the Pines came out like three weeks in advance there. Um, you know, they, they play stuff like that. Um, and so they, they did a midnight screening of The Room, which is a, a terrible, terrible movie that came out in 2003. Um, we already mentioned Tommy Wiseau, who, uh, the, the auteur behind this cinematic uh, disaster. Um, and it, it's, it's a movie that's it's bafflingly terrible. Um, and not like in a, not, I don't know, it's, it's one thing for like a movie like Troll 2 that's just a bad horror film. It's not scary, no. it's stupid. It's, it, but The Room is just like, it's confusing. It's like, like what? And it, and all it is, is just a, it's a movie where people talk to one another for like almost, you know, an hour and a half. Um, and, uh, it's, he somehow manages to make that the most uncomfortable <laughs> and strange thing. Uh, and it was not intentional. Um, mm. And uh, so they River Oaks premiered it though, and I, I I went in expecting for you know to like you know there to be like thirty people there or so, and us all make fun of the movie as it goes along. But no, it was a straight Rocky Horror show. I mean the you know the the, the whole time. So I mean it's like it was like a midnight uh, yeah. Rocky Horror show. So there's a running gag in the room where all the characters that come into the apartment they never close the damn door. <laughs> And so, like, every time a character doesn't do that in the movie, everybody screams at him and stuff like that. And just like in Rocky Horror, just people yeah, from yeah. yelling and throwing stuff I at the screen. That. And uh, it's just a lot of fun. And, like, at one point in the in the screening, one of the – somebody who was in the theater got up and, like, ran up on stage and started jumping up and trying to close the door. Um, it, was, it was fantastic. Like, um, And there's, like, this – there's this weird look that Tommy makes to something off camera at one point. Like, it's just kind of like – he, like, looks down in a way and makes, like, this, like – kind of face and at one point somebody like also ran up and like they were like waving at him like hey Tommy, Tommy hey and then he does that look and it was, just, it was genius like it was so much fun and it actually sold almost sold out I mean yeah. that, that that 
that's a, one of their main auditoriums. So there's a lot of seats there. They didn't completely sell out by any means, but they, they the whole like center row of it um, was was sold like the whole center section of that yeah. theater. Which I mean, that's a, it, like a lot of people to go to a midnight showing of a really yeah, shitty yeah, movie. Yeah, and some pride, like you said, it wasn't um, trolled. I mean, obviously, like like Rocky Horror and stuff yeah, like that are, are popular, but this is the room. Like I, I yeah. you know, I love the movie. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. That's why I was like, we all need to go see this. <laughs> I don't but, want to see that. Um, yeah. Man, I tell you what, like, it's just surprised, and it, it was more surprising, though, that people had seen it enough with other people to have these, like, you know, cult-type, like, yeah, yeah. comments about, you know, about the movie, um, and it's, it was just a, it was a total blast. It's the most fun I've had in a theater mm. in the, I mean, it might be ever, like, it was, it, was, it was amazing. I'm gonna go to every single one from now on, um, basically. So is, it, is it once a month or every week? I don't know. I, I think it's, it's not know, every week. I um, know Rocky Horror is once a month, but during the summer, they put it every other week. Yeah, and like like they're I, I I bet you they don't because the uh, the theater owner actually got pissed because in the in the movie they uh, they throw footballs around. Yeah, totally There's like four scenes where they're running around for no reason, just throwing a football back and forth. Sometimes with no dialogue, it's yeah, it's yeah. ridiculous and it was a terrible idea. Tommy Wise, I was like, yeah, let's just go. We're just gonna play. We're out here in a park. Let's just play football for a little while. Um, baffling artistic choice and. Uh, um, <laughs> So like was everybody brings footballs and then we're throwing them around the auditorium and like the owner got all pissed about it, mm-hmm. but then at the same time there's a scene where uh, in the living room of the of the room um, where there's a lot of scenes that take place there uh, they, they on the one this little tabletop behind all the characters there's those little uh, picture frames with stock photos in them and there's one of a spoon and uh, and it became uh, like a huge hit like with amongst uh, audience members because it's a terrible thing it's like like the set designer like they they didn't have time to replace those with photos and so it has the stock photo of a spoon in there and so everybody brings spoons and they throw them around the theater and like they'll like stand up and just peg people with them and stuff oh, it's, it's amazing uh, and then occasionally like you'll get a knife and people are like oh, what's the oh, knife who threw the knife uh, it's it's just a blast and so like I'm surprised though that like like because of the he was upset about the football but he was he wasn't upset about the spoons like I didn't and the spoons were <laughs> everywhere I mean they were like like I mean there was probably like there were pounds of spoons lying were they the plastic or, or silver just no just plastic okay, yeah, people were throwing because a football can break your nose know, so. Yeah, a little a little toy that. football, like a Nerf football. I don't was know. it? I don't know. I, I thought maybe it was more than one football. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the one we were throwing around was just a Nerf one, but it's, a, it's yeah. a, exciting. This because, like I said, uh, you mentioned uh, when I grew up. I mean, the only midnight film there was was Rocky Horror. I mean, there were other movies, but they weren't for that. I mean, audience participation films, I should say. Yeah, and the fact that you brought this up, it's kind of exciting. Cause I'm like. I know I went there, I, I think I told you, I went there in the summer to see Rocky Horror, bring my, my oldest daughter to see yeah. it for the first time. And they did have a list of movies. They had Evil Dead, Texas Chainsaw. Yeah, that's right. And I asked the guy, I said, are they audience participation? They're just midnight movies. And he goes, oh, it depends on the crowd. Yeah. So I think that's kind of exciting. Now you tell me this crappy movie that you should, that I saw for five minutes that, that, that's genius in the bad movie category. Oh, hi, Danny. Yeah, right. Oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> two, How's your sex life? Two is great. It's a terrible impression of Tommy. Yeah, I know. I, and, I, and what happened to this dude? Like I said, I mean, what, what's the story? Uh, I mean, like, what did they do with him after that he went in the Oh, Tommy was out? Yes. Oh, I mean, he's riding off the the hit of the room. And the room though didn't become super popular though until I think the past couple of years. Like it hasn't been popular for like a decade. Like it, even though it's been out for a decade, um, yeah. it wasn't a cult hit until a little later on. And so mm-hmm. he's totally riding the success of that movie. Uh, I mean, and, and I mean, I've, I've listened to interviews with him. He's the best interviewer ever. Like he'll wear sunglasses yeah. while uh, while interviewing. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, I've got a couple posts that are interesting about it. Uh, <laughs> um, but. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, it's, it, he's, it, like, he genuinely loves this movie. Like, he thinks it's like, you can laugh, you can cry. It's it's just a true experience it's about the relationship, <laughs> is what he'll say. And it makes no sense at all, but it's amazing. Like, I love, I, I mean, and we can have a whole discussion about how it's not okay to laugh at somebody else's art, obviously. <laughs> um but man, is it a bad movie? It's one thing to be like to make a boring film. Like we're not gonna laugh at a boring movie because uh, it's terrible. But to make like just this just complete cinematic disaster is just it's a huge accomplishment. And like I genuinely love the film, and I I've seen it many times, and yeah. it's it's the perfect movie to go see. Have you, you ever know? seen the Homeless in America one? No. What is that? 
that's the film he followed up with the documentary he made oh I need to go watch that yeah, now. I got, eh. he does like random web series like he'll show up on somebody's like there's a, there's a video on YouTube of him playing Dark Souls I was like what what is this why <laughs> like, who had the brilliant idea to have Tommy Wiseau play through Dark Souls and so he's playing through he's like oh very scary very, it's so scary oh I love I love that oh what a pretty door he's gonna be in Samurai Cop 2 Deadly Vengeance oh my gosh Samurai that, Cop that, 2 that I wanna see yes that's a, have you seen Samurai Cop 1 <laughs> Samurai Cop Samurai Cop is amazing now Samurai Cop 2 though if it ends up being as bad like intentionally bad that won't be as fun cause intentionally bad movies are not as much fun as just bad movies not the same thing yes. um, so Samurai Cop is a favorite of mine, though. That that movie is is just straight up nonsense, uh, just like The Room. Um, but yeah, no. Anyway, so if you haven't seen The Room, um, I, I highly recommend watching it. Um, even if if you love bad movies, go see it. I mean, it's it's if you love like, and I'm not talking about like you know the movies that bore you to death. I'm yeah. talking about like movies that are so bad that they make you pee your pants because it's just <laughs> baffling that anyone would ever release that. Um, Go see the room if you like those kinds of Troll Two, Samurai Cop is definitely one that I'd recommend. You know, um, on all that kind of stuff. If you're into that, go see the room. It's awesome. Uh, obviously, if you're into that stuff, I'm sure you've heard of it. But if you haven't and you do like bad movies, go check it out. Um, I mean, obviously, here in Houston, we get like we might get one a year. I don't know how often they have a screening of that, but. Um, most other cities have, uh, I say most other cities, I'm talking about L.A. and New York. Uh, if you're an L.A. and New Yorker, Austin, I'm sure you can find, um, I'm sure you can find a viewing of it. Um, and if not, it's on YouTube. I would still recommend going to see it in theaters for the first time. Uh, yeah, that sounds cooler than going to see it. It's a it's a lot of fun. Um, so anyway, we're gonna move on to television. We're actually we might end up finishing fairly quickly because I'm gonna briefly talk about girls. And um, then we're gonna we're gonna be done, because um, I'm trying trying to get this closer to an hour for you for those of you that actually listen to this, um, and we failed at that miserably over the past couple <laughs> weeks. You, last week though, you said that we weren't gonna finish early. We did finish <laughs> under one twenty. One twenty. So I'm 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 proud of that. We're getting closer. <laughs> um, but so last night uh, premiered uh, the premiere of Girls uh, at the same around the same time the Golden Globes uh, mm-hmm. were on. Um, girls came on HBO, and uh, it's the we're, we're into the fourth season of Girls, I believe, and uh, I think the show's just getting better and better as it goes on. Um, uh, Lena Dunham, uh, create creator, writer, uh, lead lead star of it. Um, she's fantastic. I think uh, she's horribly annoying, but in, in the show at least, like I mean, her character's awful, okay. but it's it's perfectly written though because it's. It, you know, it's, you're, you're writing a role for yourself and playing that role as just yeah. this obnoxious, spoiled brat uh, living in New York City. <laughs> um, obviously, this is going to be, a, like, not a... Spo- I mean, you can't spoil girls. It's not a show that it really is about the plot, I mean, for the most part. Um, but if you haven't seen season four of Girls, uh, episode one, that's what I'm going to be talking about. So minor spoilers for that, but it, who cares? Um, yeah. It's a comedy, so uh, it's not it's not like an Archer either, where you have to have seen everything yeah, and yeah, yeah. kind of pick it up. But basically, season four picks up where uh, Le- Lena Dunham's character Hannah is uh, um, leaving for for school, I believe. I actually, totally, that was one thing about this. The, this kind of picked up where last season left off in a way that I just there's things that I just don't remember happening yeah. between characters. I'm like, like I don't remember that conflict. I have no idea. Um, but yeah, she's going. She's gone off. She's leaving. I believe it's to go to school. I don't remember. She's going to Iowa. That's the title of this this episode as well. Um, and uh, and so she's saying goodbye to a lot of her friends and and kind of it's this big new chapter of her life. I hope that this season isn't just about her going to Iowa. I really hope that something bad happens and she ends up back in New York because I think that's more interesting. Yeah, of course. Um, but I'm sure she'll do something cool with it. Um, and uh, there's just this show. There's there's so many great lines. Every episode, I I, I think with this show, I'm not gonna like review the whole plot every week. Yeah. I'm literally just gonna list off the amazing lines that that come out of some of the characters' mouth. Like like Adam Adam Driver, um, who I I think is just a fantastic new actor. Um, I'm in Star Wars Seven. He's gonna be in Star Wars. I, he was in Inside Lewin Davis last yeah. year uh, briefly. Um, he he's just and he was in my favorite film last year, Francis Ha. Um, mm, as well, as well um, just great, great actor. I think he's he's strange and he just kind of goes with it. Uh, and there's a line in it where he's like, "It's not the first time I, I've ever looked in the mirror and, and wish I was different." 
like not my dick or anything, but like my forehead. <laughs> I was like, the, it's brilliant. Like the, there's those kinds of lines. I think anything that comes out of Adam Adam's mouth in this show is just fantastic. Uh, first of all, anyone who takes this show seriously, like like I mean, like like the drama is like supposed yeah. to be important. It's you're just watching it wrong, I feel like. Uh, I mean, this show is a straight comedy, and I think it's one of the funniest shows on television. Yeah. It's weird. It's interesting just in terms of like what happens to the characters each week. You never know what to expect, and not that I care about what happens. It's just interesting to watch yeah. uh, unfold, kind of like Louie. It's like not yeah, necessarily yeah. like important or anything, but it's mm-hmm. it's just interesting. Like Interesting things happen each ep- each week, um, and, and there's a scene where one of the characters tries to... Uh, Marnie um, is, the, is the character. She tries to... She, they do a uh, lunch jazz brunch or something oh. like that, and uh, where she she gets up on stage. She's a terrible singer, country sing, folk singer, I guess is what they are. Um, and it's a duo, her and I'm going blank on his name, um, but they're they're a folk duo, and uh, they yeah. do this. Like, they, it's, it's a jazz brunch, but they're not playing jazz. It's kind of the joke in the episode. <laughs> and uh, Marnie, of course, uh, like her character does, um, makes poor decisions and gets really upset about everything and freaks out because a kid is running around the the, the restaurant and uh, runs out of of the of the restaurant into the street and is crying and making a big deal out of it and uh, I'm going totally blank on his name uh, the gay character in the show um, oh, he's so, he's fantastic he's my, one of my other favorite characters I'm going oh, Elijah yes Elijah mm-hmm. um, runs out um, he's been in a lot of stuff uh, he's got his own show I believe uh on like on like NBC or something like that they have like oh, a yeah I don't remember what it's called to be honest um let me see uh Andrew Reynolds is his name uh, he plays Elijah in the show he, so Elijah runs out though and is basically like like Marnie the this new norm? business do yeah. I the new normal uh, yeah, something like that. That was the old one, yeah. Uh, it, well, it came out a couple of years, like two years yeah, ago. Yeah. It was like right after he had, you know, kind of made it big on girls, and um, and so he they they let him have his own show because he's amazing. He's one of the funniest characters in the show. Uh, but he goes out to Marnie though, who's just breaking down in the road, and it's like Marnie, this business is not for sissy bitches. <laughs> and he's like, like what, what did what did Judy Garland and Lady Gaga have in common? And she's like, they're both white. <laughs> and uh, it's just this fantastic sequence, and um, I. I love this show. I, I think uh, I think it's headed for interesting things. Uh, I think season three is one of the best like seasons of comedy television um, in the in recent years, at least. Other than like Louie, I think Louie and Girls when they're on television yeah. are just they're just knocking out of the park each week. Um, yeah, I watch. I mean, I watch Girls with my parents. Like, I think it's amazing. It's like it's the funniest show. There's a lot of sex so, on that show. Yeah, but who cares? It's hilarious. <laughs> like, there's a there's a sequence in this film or in this episode that uh, a lot of people are going crazy about. Um, the character Marnie, who was in. Uh, I'm, I'm going. I don't know any of these actors' names because they're not really like you know. They're getting Allison Williams, uh, who plays Marnie. Yeah. Um, it opens her, her character opens with her being um, motorboated in the butthole <laughs> by uh, her folk duo uh, artist friend. Motorboated in the butthole. I know. Yeah, it's a it's an interesting thing. And so people are going crazy about it. it's like it's not even shocking and it's like God, come on, who cares? Like it's funny. That's the whole point. Uh, oh. Lots of people on the internet are just be like up in arms about this stupid scene. It's like, who cares? Like you're watching a show on HBO where yeah, a lot yeah. of characters have sex and they do it in weird ways. And this would be an example of like, how is that? How is that pleasing at all? Oh God! Um, but it is really funny though. Yeah. And uh, so, I mean, I, I think it's this show is just doing interesting things each week. I mean, including that and just all, all you know, all the lines, all the characters. I mean, they're really well written and. Uh, it's a great show, so I highly recommend. Um, I own most of it on DVD, so I need to give it to you. So yeah, you gotta give it to me. Yeah, I mean, because ever since I lost the cable, I can't, I can't watch them. But I remember it was like Lisa was like talking about the show, and you got into it. No, I, I know. I, I watched the pilot. I've been I've been watching the no, show. No, well, she, she that's what, what she said. She was like. I can't believe Jeremy watches that show. It's all the girls show. <laughs> See, the thing is, it's like I mean, I, I've said I've made this comparison a couple times on uh, to, to many different people. So if you've heard this before, I'm sorry, but you might have also heard this at home. Um, I mean, it's really like, why do people like Mean Girls? Like, a, like, a, like, a, like a Mean, <coughs> mean girls? girls because it's people being awful to one another. Yeah, and, yeah, it's, yeah. And, and it's a good represent. It's not necessarily an accurate representation of what girls actually act like, but it's a funny, interesting perspective on what, how girls treat each other. And that's what girls is, and it's it's hilarious, and especially for me as a dude, I think it's hilarious. I mean, I, I it's 
it's just fascinating to watch. You know, it's like <laughs> it's like watching animals in a in, in a park and just being like, "Huh, that's interesting." <laughs> like, that you would that you would act that way. Um, it's and not, I'm not comparing girls to animals. I kind of am. Uh, the the people in the show, though, I definitely am. Um, and uh, but it, yeah, it's I think it's I think it's great. So you guys need to go check it out. Um, if you if you haven't caught caught up catch up on it though watch yeah. it from the beginning it's a little slow to start but i think it, it, it gets a little bit more confident as it goes along um they bring in a lot more of you know outside directors so that lena dunham can either just write or just direct you know um yeah. and uh and so i think i think it kind of gets stronger as it goes because she kind of allows some people to kind of come in and help her help make the show, show. Yeah, yeah um and so that's why i read three, that i think yeah. is uh Season three, I think, is the best so far. And it, 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 season four looks like it's going to be awesome. So that's my review of Girls. Um, ep- season four, episode one. Uh, it's called uh, Ohio, uh, Iowa, not Ohio. Oh, my gosh. This person is uh, blowing up my phone. Yeah. Boo, you whore, is what I just got texted. Boo, you whore. Apparently, I'm a whore. Um, Are you now? Oh, yeah. Um, no, so yeah, I, I, I think uh, you guys should all go check it out. And then Ar- I, I, Archer, which I, I, I love to death, um, it's on my favorites list yeah. of all time. Uh, uh, season awesome. six, which is crazy. Crazy. It's crazy. That show's been on for six I remember years. When I watched that first episode, man, like I said, this show is genius, and I love it. I love Archer. Yeah, um, um, it, it premiered. Carlos is uh, well, season five now. Season five is so on DVD. I'm gonna give it to yeah, him, give it to me. Um, I need to see Archer I, I should have. Uh, I'm recording season over. six, so I'll catch up once I watch your 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 box set. Um, the other show that premiered this week, real quick, Agent Carter, uh, which is a, a Marvel Studios TV show, which is their second one after Agents of Shield. So basically, it's just Shield in the '40s and '50s, um, and it deals with all that Marvel stuff then. Uh, Tony Stark's dad. Carter, so I'm, yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm gonna sit silently for a second. And uh, Captain America, but um, that's the cool thing for all you nerds out there. Uh, you've already read that Captain America is on the show. Of course, they say it's not Chris Evans, and then not, and it's not Captain America per se. But they say that he's always there and there's always a presence. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. The first episode, the two hour episode, really good. Really well done. A lot of action. Yeah, they did two ep- two hours. This yeah, way. I noticed that. I don't watch the show, but I did. Uh, but it was really good. That. Very action packed, and like I said, they introduced a lot of the characters. Uh, of course, outside of Cap, who's the only one from the forties, but they introduced a lot of the other characters from the forties and stuff. Uh, and like I said, um, again, just real quick. I mean, if people remember in comic book history and continuity, uh, there was a Captain America of the fifties. He was uh, some type of a super soldier, not one hundred percent. He ended up becoming Nomad later on in the comics. I'm thinking that's going to be the cap that they're going to talk about. Um, but it still would be good. Um, it would also compound on the Avengers 59, which basically is S.H.I.E.L.D. in the 50s, which they're going to head up to. But uh, I'm excited about the show. Also because, like I said, Marvel's blowing up um, next year alone. The slate for Marvel movies and superhero movies is, is unbelievable. They just announced CBS is going to do Supergirl, the series. Uh, you know, we're, we're, you know so that, that's going to be interesting to watch. A giant network take on a, a real superhero. Um, so yeah, you guys look out for that. That was my, my, my pick last week, as well as the return of American Horror Story. Uh, what yes. you think of it? Oh, I didn't see it. Did that happen? I didn't see it, yeah. Oh, damn. So I, now, I, yeah, I was, I, 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 we won't talk about the next week. I was week. too busy cooped up in my house watching movies. But yeah, that I missed. Uh, our boy uh, Neil Patrick Harris is great. I love Dang him. It. I'm, I'm, I, I don't know why I didn't watch that. I, I should have. Archer was I might not have got recorded. Or maybe, I don't well, know. Well, Hopefully they give them back-to-back this week. So this one, they record the new one and then the last one together. And then you'll just watch them. I thought I had the series on record. Mm. Yeah. But anyway, that's mm. that's the story with that. So that's oh, our TV it. news. Um, so are we, are we playing this out or what? Uh, what's going on? No, I mean, we're, we're finished. We're that's done. It. So, uh, guys, uh, we will see you guys next week where our director will be. Oh, I think we're doing. <laughs> I think I think we're doing Richard Linklater. Next oh, that's week. right. Richard Linklater is going to be our director next week. A uh, very good of you. I love Richard Linklater. I still have not seen films. the Before film, so I'm uh, going to watch. I own Before Midnight, which is the most recent one. Yeah. Uh, I think Before Sunrise, Before Sunset, and yeah. Before Midnight. Before Midnight, yeah. Um. So I need to watch those three. You need to watch Boyhood. Yeah, I'm going to watch Boyhood. I have it. I I love Linklater ever since uh, he came out with Slacker. A good text. Great text on Netflix. Film. Yeah, you got, I love. Well, and that's we'll talk about yeah. that next week. Yeah, so we're, we're from Texas, or I'm not yeah, from Texas. I'm from Chicago. Chicago I'm Neither from of us are from Texas. We're, we're, we're expats, here. but yeah. we're here living in Houston. Uh, so we've got a lot to say about Linklater, especially yeah. because his films are set here. And so, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll talk about that a lot next week. And uh, other than that, uh, I don't know what else we have in terms of movies planned for next week, but um, 
we'll definitely be discussing uh, Richard. Richard, yeah, Richard, Richard who won. And you didn't a, say who was opening this weekend at movies. No, I didn't. Um, yeah. But we'll just leave that. Go to IMDb. We'll go and to IMDb. The you'll movies. see the movies going up. <laughs> we talked about it too much stuff. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get out before. All right, guys. So, yeah. We're, trying we're, to make we're this guys. shorter every week. We'll see you next week. You take care. Later. Later. Bye. I want the last word. <laughs> Goodbye. Later, Gator.